Hi guys, I'm Avery Wickham, a student at Iowa State, and today I will be teaching you guys how to bird watch and bird feed. So this is a really fun hobby to do, especially because a lot of people are stuck inside right now and don't really have a lot of access to wildlife. So this is a way to bring wildlife to you, your own house. And so I'm gonna be teaching you what to use, how to use it, and then what you might see. And this is really common. A lot of people don't realize how many birds are around them, but if you just go outside and be really quiet, you can hear them. All right, so for bird feeding today, we are gonna use just this really big blend of stuff. And so I'm gonna point out some of the things that are in it. So got just nuts. This is a black oil sunflower seed. This is really common in bird feeding. You're gonna see it a lot. Um, corn. And then also, because this is kind of an expensive mix, we have dried fruit. And so the birds really love this, so that's gonna go fast. And now you're gonna wanna take that bird seed that you just mixed, fill up a cup with it, and then head out to your bird watching area. Mine is right down my deck. And then just start putting it out for them. You're going to want to put it somewhere where the birds feel safe to come. And enough of it so that way they don't have to fight over it. And if you keep a consistent schedule, then they'll know to be expecting it. So before I came out, I had a bunch of birds waiting. No food. They're kind of mad. Now a huge, huge, huge no-no for birds are big open windows like this. These can instantly turn into death traps because they see the reflection of the river and the trees and me, hi. <laughs> and they try to fly through it and then they end up getting, they hit, hit their head, get concussed. And usually that's pretty high fatality. And so what I did, they took a bar of soap from my bathroom, got it wet and then drew these lines. And that way when they see them, they know that they can't fly through it. And so it's really important to make them super close together. So online they'll recommend a two by two grid. And I also highly support that. Mine are a little bit bigger just because I did it freehand. But before I got here, my dad said there was about two bird strikes a day. And now in the four weeks since it's been up, we've had, I think one. So that's pretty good. I'd like to get some netting up here, but I don't think that's going to happen. We also have what we call bird socks. And so this one's empty, so I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how I fill them. Got to put the carabiner up top to connect it. These are super simple. You just undo the top and then pour in the Niger seed. We don't have that much left, as you can tell, so I only did a little bottom. But usually you can fill it all the way full. And then these super small holes in it allow birds with thin beaks, like goldfinches, to be able to pluck the seed out. They really enjoy it. And then I'm going to hang this one with the other one off the side of the deck. And so that way they can just come on and start eating. And we can see a little goldfinch right there, the Iowa State bird, eating our Niger seed that we put in there. All right, the next bird feeding device I'm gonna show you is this funky looking thing. And so, as you can tell, flips open. And so this used to be an old s'more maker that my dad remade into a suet feeder. And so as you can tell, it's kinda repurposed. And we use binder clips to keep it shut. Um, birds don't really care what their bird feeders look like, so you can really use anything. The reason we use it in this big cage is because lots of animals besides birds are interested in this food, like raccoons, basically anything, our dog. <laughs> and so they've got a bunch of different names, Berry Blast, Birds Blend, Orange Bird. I decided to go with the Peanut Crunch. 
So I tore off the packaging and then you kind of got to pop it out of its container. Set it in there. So suet is animal fat. So this is an animal fat from a cow. Birds just love it. And so hopefully we'll attract some cardinals with it. Woodpeckers also. Sometimes robins, which is pretty unusual in my opinion. So I've just attached it right there. And so they can hop on the cage and start pecking at it. Our last feeder is this. And so this we fill up with sugar water. And so you just mix water and sugar. It's as easy as it sounds. And then we put grape jelly here. And so I'll refill that soon. And so this attracts hummingbirds, which it's too early for, so we don't have any hummingbirds yet. And also Baltimore Orioles. So those are super bright orange. Hopefully we'll be able to see some later. And now for the fun part, waiting. And so to start bird watching, you're gonna need two main things. You're gonna need a bird identifier if you're still new and you don't know all the birds. And so this one's has a bunch. Ooh, downy woodpecker, purple, purple martin, barn swallow, blue jay, black cap chickadee, which we're definitely gonna see. And you're also you're still pretty far away. I'm pretty lucky to be as close as I am binoculars and so these will give you super close-up look at the birds and there's so many details that you miss if you don't use binoculars so I highly recommend it. Best times to bird watch are really early in the morning because that's when the birds are most active but if you're like me and you wake up at 10 or noon sorry my dog's very loud down here <laughs> then it's also okay to just do it whenever as long as you have patience because less birds are gonna come all right, so while the birds are eating, you can go ahead and look them up and then read about them. And so that is a red-winged blackbird eating some of the food. That is a white-breasted nuthatch. Ooh, there he goes. Most importantly, don't forget to have fun. Sometimes it can be stressful. If you just started and there's not enough birds coming up and you're not sure if you're gonna see anything, but do it with a buddy. I'm gonna do it with my dad and just try to have fun with it.